What's up guys, Silver here with another Halo Master Chief Collection Achievement Guide. This time we're doing part 5 of A Monument to All Your Sins, which is complete every level of Halo Reach on Legendary by yourself. So start up on the beach here, we're going to uh, kind of go through the usual path, but we're going to take a left right here actually, and we're going to cut into the water over here. That way we can avoid a bunch of the enemies that land on the beach in front of us here. And you can see we enter kind of a soft kill zone here. We have to return to the battlefield within 10 seconds, but we're easily going to do that. Just kind of follow this path, we're going to kind of skirt along the edge of that, and just run up the beach here. And we're going to get into the Wraith. Well, not into it. We're going to hop onto the Wraith and destroy it. And we'll be able to move on to the next section. Uh, the reason we want to kill this Wraith is because we don't want him to kill us when we're kind of focusing on the uh, enemies we do have to kill up at the top of the uh, beach here. So we're going to just continue following this path. And there's going to be kind of a bridge with some cover that we're going to hide behind for a little bit before the Wraith gets actually dropped off up here. So you can see the uh, dropship in the distance bringing that Wraith in. We're going to hide here, which is the bridge I was talking about, kind of over the water here. And the gun on this dropship is on the back side of it, so just kind of position yourselves so it can't see you and you can't see it. And then we'll run over here uh, as soon as the dropship stops moving forward, wait a split second, and then you could just sprint over here and you could hop onto the back of this thing while it's being dropped off. And you want to make sure you board it on the back side because if you board on the front, the gunner on the turret up there will actually shoot you off before you're able to destroy it. But now that the Wraith is dead, we're going to run up this path and we're going to jump up on these rocks and we'll be able to flank these enemies because they're going to be focused on Noble Team moving up the beach. So we'll be able to flank these guys and easily take out a bunch of them. You can see there's a couple of needle rifle jackals here and the jackals that have shields are kind of pointing them towards Noble Team so we could easily land some headshots from the side over here. And then there's going to be some grunts and also an elite over there. So uh, sometimes he's taken out quickly. You can see he was taken out by Noble Team pretty quickly there. Other times you may want to grab a plasma pistol to noob combo him real quick. Take his uh, shield down entirely with the uh, overcharged plasma pistol and then just land a headshot with your pistol. Uh, but we're going to move in here now. Grab the uh, rockets from that guy. And we're going to run over to this guy and we're going to kill him to take his rocket ammo. Unfortunately for him. And we'll be able to move into the next part of the mission with rockets. So we should have almost entirely full rockets. And as you go through this door you want to start sprinting so you could assassinate this elite. Sometimes he turns a little bit right before you uh, land the assassination so you might have to smack him again and then just land the headshot. So be aware of that, that might happen. And then we'll move up and go to the right. There's gonna be a door up ahead here, which is where we're gonna wait for a few seconds while the uh, kind of whole area in here loads. And there's a big display, there's a big uh, bay window type thing opening up and you're supposed to be like, wow, look at this saber, it's a big reveal. But uh, we're just gonna hang by the door and wait for that to open up. Grab the sword, so we have a sword and rockets and we're gonna run up to the uh, saber up here. A cutscene will activate, we'll skip it, and now we find we are in space, in a saber. Uh, so we're going to start by flying up. We want to get on about the same level as the top of Anchor 9, which is the big station up here. So you can see I'm looking at it right now, so we want to get a little higher. So I'll boost up again a little bit. And then once we're high enough, I'll turn to the right, and there's going to be a big uh, blue glowing area over here. And I don't like to fly directly at it, I like to fly to the bottom left area of that uh, section. So we're just kind of coasting in this direction, I'm not holding forward or back. Uh, so it will eventually turn me around because I'll reach the end of the playable area. But at that point, uh, hopefully the dialogue will be over. Unfortunately, there's a bunch of dialogue, so we can't really get into the action right away. We have to wait for it to all play out. And then uh, we'll be able to start the first wave of enemies here. The first wave of enemies is going to be a bunch of Banshees. And then there's going to be a wave of Seraphs. And then there's going to be a wave of Banshees and Seraphs. And then there's going to be Phantoms that are added to the mix. And uh, we only have to deal with the first two waves, and then we can go hide somewhere, and the uh, AI, the friendly AI, will take out the rest of the enemies for you. So here's the first wave, Banshees. We want to fly uh, in this direction till the nav point's about 500 meters away, and then we could start in on these Banshees. You could kind of leave your reticle in the same space-ish, uh, and we'll be able to take out a bunch of enemies right away. And uh, I should have turned my reticle down at that point after I killed five of them, because there are a bunch of enemies that are streaking up from below. And you can take out a bunch. Uh, if you time it right, you could actually get a Killionaire and uh, kill a bunch of them really quickly and easily. But uh, we got five right off the bat and then a couple more. So we're in pretty good shape overall. We're just not in the best shape we could be. But killing a bunch right off the bat makes this whole encounter much more manageable. Obviously, uh, as you take them out, there's less incoming fire. So it just gets easier and easier as you go through the wave. So we're going to finish these last uh, few off. Once there's just a small number of enemies remaining in the wave, there are nav points that pop up on them, so you could find them more easily. 
But now that we finished that wave, we want to go back to where we were positioned for the beginning of uh, the first wave. We want to position ourselves there for the beginning of this wave as well. Unfortunately, you probably won't be able to because just of where you are when uh, you make that last kill. You probably won't be uh, close enough to that position to get in position again because there's a set amount of time that has to elapse before this next wave comes in. So you probably won't be able to get back there. But anyway, we're going to uh, do our best to do so, and then we'll take out these Seraphs. The Seraphs, uh, you want to take out by using your chain gun, which is your default weapon. Being down here is a really good spot if you get low on health or shield. So being under that structure, also behind Anchor 9, the big structure, the big uh, station, is another good spot. But it's tough to get to sometimes, so you might want to dive down to that uh, first hiding spot I was mentioning. Um, but we're going to take these guys out again with the chain gun to take down their shields. And then we want to switch to our missiles to lock onto them to finish them off. Uh, you don't want to just start with missiles because when they have their shield, uh, the missiles don't lock on. They'll just kind of start by looking like they're locked on, but then they'll just kind of get scattered and not hit their target. So we're going to finish these guys off. The second wave isn't too bad either. It's kind of like a tutorial wave just to show you how to kill these guys, how to fight them. Um, but this next wave, this third wave, is the big annoying one. Uh, and it's pretty tough, actually. So we're going to just not do it. And uh, at this point, Anchor 9's guns have come back online so they could help you out or just do everything. So that's what we're going to let them do. So we're just going to go to the back of Anchor 9. And when you turn around to face the back of Anchor 9, you're going to see this right side. We're going to go uh, to the bottom of this kind of scaffolding type section here. I don't know how to describe it really, but just go to this area. You can see a glowing red hallway to the left over there. And we're going to kind of wedge our nose in the bottom left uh, corner here. And we're just going to sit here for, I think it takes about 8 minutes for the phantoms to come in. So we're going to skip ahead here about 8 minutes. And then uh, you can see that the nav points have popped up. There's 5 nav points now pointing uh, towards the upper right side of my screen. Those are pointing to all the phantoms. And then I skipped ahead another few minutes. And uh, you can see that the phantoms are now killed by the uh, Anchor 9 guns. So our friendly guns took those guys out for us. And the way to get out of here is you want to move up and to the right. Instead of kind of uh, having your nose down and to the left, we want to pull up and to the right so we could kind of do a loop, kind of like you're on a roller coaster. Just do a roller coaster loop, and then once we could see this hurricane-type structure in the clouds down here, we're going to just boost down there, and then we'll just kind of come up and under Anchor 9, and you can see the nav point where we want to dock. Just go to that nav point from below. You don't even have to worry about crashing into Anchor 9 accidentally. There will be a cutscene that we skip, and then we're going to find ourselves in a space combat battle again. We're going to dive down and towards the Covenant ship in the middle of this map, and we want to come up under it, and there's actually a bunch of docked Banshees. You could take them out before they launch if you time it right. So we're going to come up from under them, and I kind of like to start from the nearest uh, Banshees and kind of zigzag to the furthest Banshees. And I got a Killionaire there. You could actually get uh, multiple Killionaires if you kill all the remaining Banshees. So we killed most of them, but a few got away. They dive down to the left and to the right in a group. So they kind of stay bunched up for a while, so it's easy to take them out even if they do get away for a little bit. But now that the Banshees are taken out, we could focus on the engines of this big Covenant Corvette in the middle of this map. So we're going to kind of stay underneath this thing, and then we'll come up from below, and we'll be able to attack the uh, engines from below. So we're going to do that. So you can see as we come up, we could see the engines. We could fire from this position, but it's actually better... Uh, when we go over kind of the rim of this loop in the Covenant or the, yeah, the Covenant Corvette here, and we can kind of wrap around that thing, whatever that is, that structure, and you could see the engines more clearly from this angle. So we could take out a couple, and then we could kind of loop around this uh, rim or whatever the structure of the Covenant ship is one more time, and we'll find uh, we could take out the other two engines here real quick, and then we could kind of go back down underneath the Covenant ship, and we'll just hide here, and we could actually let the Savannah, our friendly ship over here, fire at the remaining Seraphs and take everything out for us. So similar to Anchor 9, uh, when we kind of just docked behind the thing and just let the Anchor 9's guns take everything out, we're going to let the Savannah's guns take everything out here. Um, so once we took out those uh, engines, it actually got a bunch of other Seraphs to come into this section. So there's a bunch of Seraphs here now. We're just going to wait right here. This is kind of the what I think is the glassing beam or something. Or maybe it's a grav lift. That's probably what it is. Uh, this circular thing in here. doesn't matter what it is. Just uh, go to this circular thing. Just kind of uh, hold back so you don't crash into it at full speed. You want to crash into these things at minimal speed. And that same thing applies to Anchor 9 as well. But you can see we dismounted in the same way. We did a loop kind of like we were on a roller coaster. Went down. Now we can come back up and go to the nav point. It will activate a cutscene. We'll skip it. 
We'll take out our sword that we grabbed from the beginning of the mission, and then we'll slice this jetpack elite that comes through this door shield type thing. It's like a floor or ceiling shield or something, but whatever it is, just slice him as he comes out of there. Then we're going to jump across this thing, and we'll uh, kill the second one that comes through with our sword, and then we'll drop down to this kind of uh, rafter type thing, and we'll shoot to the right and the left. Uh, there's going to be two elites kind of at computer console type things down there, and then once you kill those guys, we could jump up and out of the shield door there's low gravity in this section so you could jump out and we'll get our shield back because we're probably going to take some fire like we did here and then we could uh jump back down once our shields are replenished and we could take these two remaining elites out who are kind of like on the outskirts of the area here this guy i want to show you how to take out an elite with a sword uh other than those first two elites but he's not cooperating and he's not at a very good angle for my rockets either so i'm going to just jump back out i was hoping he would reposition himself so we could sort them, but I'm just going to take them out with my rockets in a little bit. But we'll just, uh, you know, we'll take what we could get here. So uh, the next thing I'm going to do once I take out this elite is I'm actually going to grab a plasma pistol, which there are two full plasma pistols at the bottom middle of this map. And I'm also going to grab a needle rifle, which is to the upper left of the door we want to go through. So once we take this guy out, we'll run to the bottom middle and grab a plasma pistol or we want we'll grab the uh the needle rifle first so that's the door we want to go through we'll jump up here and there's a crate of needle rifle ammo here so grab that and then we'll jump down to the bottom mid of the map and here is one of the two plasma pistols on the ground like i mentioned this door will open up and oftentimes the elite is not this close to the door he's usually further back so i would uh tear into the grunts first with my needle rifle the needle rifle you could kill these guys in three shots or less obviously if you land a headshot uh, it will kill them, but if you just land three body shots, it will super combine and explode and kill the grunts. So it's a quick and easy way to take those guys out. And then for uh, this room, when we first get into this room, we want to prioritize killing that engineer because he provides energy shields to all of the enemies in here, even the grunts. So we want to make sure that doesn't happen. And then we want to prioritize finding and killing the fuel rod grunt, who's usually on the right side of the map over here. Um, so take that guy out, and then we can focus on killing a bunch of the other grunts you want to be aware that some of the ramps above you uh, could be occupied by a jetpacking elite because they don't start off with a, an elite on there, but all the elites in this room have jetpacks, so uh, sometimes they'll jetpack up there. So just keep an eye on your radar and uh, kind of listen to your surroundings to make sure that you're not getting snuck up on there. Uh, if you do, you could use an overcharged plasma pistol to take down their shields real quick and then finish them off with a headshot. And uh, we'll just retreat back to this hallway, not because I necessarily need to, I just want to kind of show you what it's all about here uh, and this section once you take out a few enemies you could actually retreat here and then enemies will just charge your position one by one actually so you could easily take these guys out as they come through the door whether they're a grunt or an elite if they're an elite just overcharge plasma pistol them and finish them off with a headshot if they're a grunt just lay into them uh, with three you know needle rifles and uh, needle rifle rounds and they will blow up so uh, it makes it much easier than dealing with all of them at once in that room so once there are only a few remaining, they will get nav points on them, and so we'll know where they are, so that's a good thing. And uh, the last two actually don't ever charge your position, so you have to actually move up a little bit. There's more needle rifle ammo at the top of the ramp here, um, and we'll just kind of shoot them from afar over here. And we could use the railings and the pillars for cover and everything, so obviously if your uh, shield is depleted, just duck back behind cover, wait for it to recharge, and then you know start in on these elites again. But we could pretty quickly take these guys out, and then we could go up to the top of the ramp here and activate this switch. It will activate a cutscene. We're going to skip that. And we're going to sprint over to this door on the right. There are three doors on this side. We want to go to the rightmost door. Or actually, I guess that's a lie. We want to go to this door right here, though. Just follow this path. Um, we're going to come up behind these two elites. We're going to wrap in around the left as fast as we can. These two elites will probably be caught off guard. So you can just wrap around behind them and assassinate them. And if you find yourself uh, unable to do so, you could always just charge the plasma pistol real quick to take down their shield and then finish them off with the needle rifle round to the face like we've been doing then the uh, grunts should be quickly killed by your friendlies and you could help them out if you want and we're going to run down here and oftentimes uh, you'll be able to assassinate these two guys but they were awake for this run so we're just going to give them the old noob combo like we've been doing and we'll be able to quickly take care of these guys sometimes uh, like I mentioned they like to uh, go to specific spots so you could kind of predict where they're going to be and assassinate them but this time they were aware of our presence so we'll just uh we'll just deal with that with the noob combo 
And we're going to move to the bridge at this point. I moved. I started moving back because I wanted to grab a fresh plasma pistol or a fresher one. But uh, I realized the doors were locked behind me, so I could not do that. So we're just going to move ahead with this mostly depleted one. And uh, you could actually, based on how these enemies are lined up, you could actually assassinate all of them depending on, um, you know, where they spawned in. Some spawns are not possible to assassinate all of them. Some are. This setup, you could actually assassinate everybody. You could tell because there's no grunts in the middle of this room staring at this hologram of reach. So if there was one, it would be tougher. If there's two, it's pretty much impossible because killing one alerts the other grunt. But we're just going to assassinate some of them, and then I'll just kind of uh, throw in the towel. I don't want to assassinate all of them uh, because I want to show you kind of how to deal with this room if they were somewhat alerted to your presence. We took out some sneakily, but the majority are still alive here. You want to be aware of this guy. There is one sword elite who will just kind of charge your position and sword you. That's what sword elites do. So you want to be aware of that because uh, he'll kill you with one hit. So just kind of be on the lookout for invisible elites. You could almost see them. You could mostly not see them, but you could see them a little bit if you're really paying attention. So just keep an eye out and also keep your ears open. You could hear them coming sometimes as well. So uh, we'll find that there's some more invisible elites in this room too. So a good way to deal with them is you can't actually lock on to them with your plasma pistol because they're invisible, but you could just shoot your plasma pistol like a normal gun and it actually takes down their shield really quickly because uh, the shielding on those invisible elites is not very powerful. They kind of trade in their shield for having invisibility. It's like a trade-off they take. So we're just going to... Uh, super combine any of the grunts like we've been doing in the previous rooms and we're going to close the gap on this final elite up here This guy is a concussion rifle, so he's pretty uh, devastating with that So we're just going to kind of leapfrog our way up Just use the cover as you can so you can close the gap and then you could noob combo him as well And then we'll be able to move up and uh, grab the switch or activate the switch switch the switch There's more needle rifle ammo on the side there. So I grab that you might want to grab a fresh plasma pistol if you need to from one of the dead grunts. Mine's pretty good, but I'm going to look for another one. And uh, can we find one? Who knows? Sometimes they have needlers too, so we got a, we got a better one here. We're going to activate the switch, and then that will get enemies to spawn in through the door that we came from, so we have to go back that way. So we're going to find that there's a bunch of jackals and grunts, so we'll just tear into these guys pretty uh, easily, and we'll be able to uh, face off against this one elite as well. So you want to kill the elite, uh, not last. So you don't want to wait to the end to kill him because if you do, he will run away. Basically, whoever the last one or two enemies are, they tend to run back to the uh, previous section. And that is something you don't want to do. You want to uh, deal with them while they're here and uh, not teaming up with all of the enemies in the next section, which is actually the previous section. But you can see that this last enemy is on our radar. He's running away. Fortunately, he was a grunt, so he's not that quick. If he was an elite, he would definitely be able to make it back to this room, and he would join forces with uh, his buddies up ahead here. I actually tried to do a concussion rifle jump, which is doable. I usually am able to pull it off, and I did not this time around, of course, because I'm recording. And uh, you could actually just bypass all of them if you make that jump, but you could also just kill these guys. They're not too hard. There's only a couple jackals and a grunt or something, and an elite. So uh, by not allowing the elite to retreat to this section. We just made this section a little easier because we have to deal with one elite instead of two elites. So uh, now that they're all dead, uh, we're just going to continue headshotting everybody that we can and noob comboing the rest. And the rest means elites because they're the only ones who have an overshield or any shield. Uh, we're going to come to this section again, and there's going to be needle rifle ammo to our left in a crate, but we're just going to kind of hang back here. They're all distracted by George in the middle of the room, so they shouldn't really shoot at you too much at all. And uh, we'll be able to take them out pretty easily. So we're going to find that there's health pack over here. There's two right here, and then there's actually one more behind the pelican itself. So you could grab that if you need it. And this guy took down my shield, which I'm not appreciative of. But we're actually going to get into the turret of the uh, pelican here. So you could see I was kind of crouching uh, towards the front of the pelican there, and you just hold the action button, and you'll actually be able to board the pelican and get into the gun. You can't move the pelican or anything but it's uh, a place where you are basically invincible. And by basically, I mean you are literally invincible in this thing. So you cannot be killed. The only downside is the fact that you can't move your position, so you're kind of fixated on this position, and enemies could hide behind cover. So it makes it a little annoying when you're shooting at them, and then they duck behind cover and don't come out for a little bit. But uh, you want to shoot the ground. Immediately when you get into this thing, you want to look down at the ground and shoot, because that will actually visually destroy the pelican turret and uh, you'll be able to actually see what you're shooting at. 
Um, but the turret is actually still there physically, um, so you could actually still use it. So you want to stay in it because uh, once you visually destroy the turret like we did so we could see everything, it actually possibly will despawn uh, once you get out of it. So we're just going to stay in it, and you could stay in here indefinitely. There's no time limit or anything. You're invincible. You have infinite ammo. So we're just going to stay in here and kill all these guys as we go. Um, initially, there's a group of enemies in this room, so we took those guys out. Then we hopped into the pelican turret here, and after that first wave of enemies that we took out, there's going to be four jackals with shields that spawn towards the left that we took out, and there's also two more jackals up at the top of that ramp that spawned in with needle rifles. We took those guys out. Then the next wave is a group of grunts and one elite that spawn to the bottom right over here, which is where I'm fighting right now. So that's uh, the wave that could be annoying because there's an elite and he likes to uh, duck behind the cover and everything and then uh, get his shields back and then kind of pop out again. So this part could be a little frustrating, but the next waves aren't as bad, um, barring one wave. So we'll, get, we'll talk about that when we get to it, but once we... Uh, I'm just shooting at the center thing. I'm just annoyed by that pillar right there because he's blocking my shot. But George is over there, so he should, you know, do some work on that elite, hopefully, in in theory. But uh, we're trading in kind of speed for the guarantee that we're going to win. You know, we have infinite ammo, like I mentioned. We, uh, we can't take any damage in this thing. So we're just... Uh, oh, here we go. We got uh, the next wave coming in. It is Grunt's... Galore, just straight up grunts coming out of that center uh, door right there at the top of the ramp. So they're pretty easy to take out if you uh, are able to get them before they hide behind something. One is going to run up the ramp to the right, or to the left rather, unfortunately. I did not get him before he ran away. But once you kill, I believe, four of those grunts, two elites spawn in at the uh, top of the ramp on the left over here. So that's who I'm shooting at now. So those are the two uh, other elites that could be frustrating because they obviously have shields and they like to duck behind cover after you kill those two elites and the uh, the grunts here there's going to be four elites that spawn at the top corners of each uh, or at, at the top of the ramp of each corner so uh, on your front left and front right back left and back right there will be a an elite that spawns in and uh, those elites are much easier to deal with they have much uh, better weapons, but they just charge your position, basically. They don't really hide as much, so they're easier to just take out really quick. So they're going to kind of come to the center here if we allow them. So you can see they're kind of charging George's position, charging our position, which we're a fan of because it makes it easier with our infinite health and ammo to take them out. So we'll, uh, we'll be finishing this up real soon here. But up until this point, we haven't really taken any fire to demonstrate that we're invulnerable. But uh, we just took some plasma launcher rounds right there. And they locked right onto us. And we just took a nade as well. And you can see that we are not taking any damage at all. So I am grateful to that elite for showing us that uh, we are invulnerable. And I'm going to repay him by just pelican turreting him to death. And you can see, even though it's disappeared, it uh, is still able to be gotten in. You can still get in it. Um, but you want to just stay in it because there's a chance it will disappear. Uh, because as time goes on... Uh, just weapons that are on the map disappear and that includes the pelican turret so you want to get in there and just stay in there but that is the end of the mission we would go to the back of the pelican and it triggers the cutscene and we get a nice close up of George and that's the last time we'll ever see of him spoiler but that's it for this one guys join me next time when we tackle the next mission Exodus on Legendary thanks for watching guys if you found that video helpful be sure to click on the scorpion icon to subscribe and hit that bell for notifications you can also check out some related guides by clicking on the videos on screen and you can find links in the description for other social media links of mine stay tuned for more halo guides and i'll see you in the next one